So we wanted to take a look at what we call stoichiometry, which essentially is just a fancy term for calculations. What we want to look at is several different types of calculations. One of the most important ones is conversions between moles and grams and grams to moles. And what we are essentially trying to do here is find the relationship between how many grams are equivalent to one mole of a particular element or compound. Now this is unique for every single element or compound because each one has a different mass. So you need to basically derive this conversion factor. It's not to be memorized, but you simply will look up the formula weight or calculate the formula weight for a compound and it will be the number of grams in one mole. So a mole again is the SI unit for the amount of a substance. So if I were to say one mole of glucose, which is C6H12O6, the equivalent mass of that would be the formula weight of C6H12O6. So I would calculate the mass of carbons, which is 6 times 12, that's 72. 12 times 1 for hydrogen, that's 12. And 6 times 16 for oxygen, that's 96. And I would get a total of 180 grams. What that's essentially telling me is that every 180 grams of glucose is equal to one mole of glucose. Again, where I've got the, those values is from the periodic table, the respective atomic masses of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. I found the cumulative mass or weight of glucose for one unit, for one mole of glucose, I know that weighs 180 grams, and that is then the equivalent of one mole of glucose. This is simply a conversion factor. Just like any other conversion factor you might have seen, this is the, the very same way, and you can use ratios or dimensional analysis to solve a problem. So what is a conversion factor? A conversion factor is simply an equivalency. It's an equivalency of what equals what. It basically is an equivalency factor, and it helps us convert so that we say x is equal to y. So we can convert from x to y and back from y to x. What we in can in turn interpret from that is that this is a ratio. So that x over y or y over x is our conversion factor. This is the ratio we're going to use to perform conversions. For example, if I was to convert from grams to moles or moles to grams for glucose, this right here would be the conversion factor I use. If I was to look at one mole of, say, carbon dioxide, of course, the equivalent mass of that would not be 180, nor would it be that for water or for fructose or for ammonium. Each compound has its own formula weight, which we have to calculate, again, by finding the formula weight. So one carbon weighs 12. Each oxygen weighs 16, so 16 times 2 is 32, plus the 12, this one is 44 grams. That is my one mole of carbon dioxide to gram equivalency. One mole is equal to 44 grams. This as well is a conversion factor. So how would we write these conversion factors? Let's take a look. We would look at them as either one mole glucose equals 180 grams. I could also write that as one mole glucose over 180 grams. Or I could actually say the 180 grams is equivalent to the one mole of glucose. Either one of these would be saying the same thing. So how or which one of these do we use? Well, let's take a look. If we were to ask, what is the equivalence of 144 grams of glucose? How many moles would that be? Using dimensional analysis, we always write the given value first, 144 grams of glucose. 
We'll multiply that by our conversion factor, which will be, of course, in a ratio form, in a fractional form. So, of course, what I'm trying to do is eliminate grams and attain moles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this conversion factor version, this version of our conversion factor. Why? Because it means that 180 grams will be on the bottom and one mole would be on the top. So that grams and grams cancel out, leaving us with 144 times 1, which is 144, divided by 180, which would give us 0 0.80, and the unit that's left is moles of glucose. So that is how we converted from grams to moles using this particular conversion factor. Let's do it the other way around, just to prove a point. Let's say 0.8 moles of glucose is equivalent to how many grams? So our conversion factors again were 1 mole is 180 grams or 180 grams is 1 mole. And again, this is specific only for glucose. Alright, so now my given is 0 0.80 moles. That is my given. Always write your given first, then multiply by your conversion factor in fraction or ratio form. Fraction and ratio mean the same thing. So in this case, I have mole here. I'm attempting to eliminate mole, so mole should be on the bottom. This now is the conversion factor I'm going to use. One mole is 180 grams. So mole and mole are eliminated. 0 0.8 times 180 is 144. Only unit left is grams. And that is how we convert between grams and moles, or relatively any conversion, as long as you know the conversion factor. Now this will also be very helpful to you in determining not only from grams to moles, but of course you can go back from moles to grams as we've just done. And then you can take that one step further because you can then convert moles to molecules or atoms using Avogadro's number, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. The same thing would be equivalent every one mole is equivalent to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Every 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd is equal to one mole. And again, going back and forth between those is simply as easy as saying one mole equals this Avogadro's value or this Avogadro number is equal to one mole. And putting it in a fractional form as we have up here and picking which version of the fraction. What should be on top, what should be on the bottom. Remember, every time you have a conversion factor, it has two parts. It's a fraction, so it has a top and a bottom. They both mean the same thing. They both have the same equivalency. They both tell you the same thing, but which version you use depends on what your given unit is. You always want to have the given unit match up or line up opposite or diagonal to that part in your conversion factor so that it's eliminated, leaving you with the desired unit.